Hello folks, this is my Flashforge Adventure 5M. This is uh, not my newest printer, that would be the A1 Mini found over here, uh, but this is probably my most reliable, quickest printer that I have, uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. So we're gonna dive into this bad boy today, uh, take a look at its capabilities, some things that you can change on it, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But let's get started here. Um, this is a Core XY machine. So what that means is that this bed moves up and down and the print head goes left, right, and back and forth. Uh, the advantage of this is that because we can lock this bed down into place, uh, you can really speed up this bad boy because it's using a lot less weight to move through everything. It's not having to worry about going up and down. It's literally just going left and right or back and forth. Uh, to control that, it's on three ball screws. There's one here and then one on each side. Uh, and it goes relatively quick through everything. Now this is not totally its bone stock configuration. Uh, you can see there's these white and orange things on there. Uh, and that's because you can actually 3D print an enclosure for this. If you wanna put in uh, some plexiglass and enclose it, they have 3D printable hinges and all that stuff ready to go. I started that process and decided not to do it because honestly, I'm printing just PLA. I don't need to go in and have that all craziness set up there. Uh, so as you look, I also printed a holder here in case I wanted to have it off the side. The problem was that this thing lifts up or pulls back or pulls into the side here. And that causes some problems where it pulls it off of there and gets tangled. Uh, the default one is just this metal hook in the back. It comes out of the bottom, goes up into this Bowden tube. It has a filament runout sensor and then goes through here. Um, this is not a motor pushing anything. The extruder motor, all that stuff is housed, is right here. Uh, it's all housed in there. And then the change of filament, all you gotta do is pull this up, you cut the filament, and then uh, let it run through and push more up there. The power button is down here as well. So my hand's there, we'll turn it on. Uh, it will go through, the fans will fire up, the screen will turn on momentarily, and it will get fired up and ready to go. Now, there's a lot to say about this. So you take a look on the top here. I have uh, all these markings, because that's some super glue, because I did print the ring that goes around this. Uh, in order to have this fully enclosed, basically, um, there's a lid that has to go over top, and this tube needs to get rerouted and all of this stuff to make sure that it works. Uh, not my preferred way of doing stuff. Um, again, if I was printing ABS, that'd be great. Uh, there is venting back here, so you can actually put in filters and all that stuff if you need to. There's two spots for that. Uh, but again, I'm printing PLA almost entirely, so I don't need that. Uh, we are in startup mode right now. Uh, I can print this wirelessly. Uh, it is connected to my home network, and I can print that through uh, either Worker Slicer or Flash Print 5, which is a slicer that comes with this. Uh, but generally, I find myself using a USB key, uh, and it has a input fort right on the side there, like so. But if we take a look here, we have our screen. Uh, that has our temperature readout, has that it's Wi-Fi connected, and it's measuring all the stuff. Uh, and then we can go in and take a look at uh, my print files. Uh, I can change the filament, and then there's some settings on there. None of this stuff is all that big of a deal. It's pretty easy to manage, uh, and it, it goes through and does its thing. Uh, the real magic of this printer is its speed and its cost. It's an incredibly quick printer, and it only costs about 300 bucks. You can sometimes find it on sale for a little less, but usually 300 has been the sweet spot for it. Uh, compare that to this guy, which was also $300, uh, but because it's a bed slinger, this guy moves back and forward, and this thing has to go up and down, which means it's a lot slower, because it has to take care of all that weight. Um, that It's fast. It's way faster than my old uh, Ender, but it's still not as fast as this. Uh, and this is about $300 as well. And then we have this bad boy here. Just the Bamboo A1 Mini is $200, but if you add on the uh, AMS Lite, it rolls up to $350. So... A lot more capability, much smaller bit plate, slower, but just as capable for the most part. I've had a few lifting issues with this one um, where the corners want to peel up. Uh, and then uh, this bad boy has been really rock solid for me. So let's go over and jump into the uh, slicers, see what it looks like there and your options when it comes to slicing, and we'll take a look. So here's the default software that comes with the FlashForge. Essentially, it's called FlashPrint 5, and uh, it has a lot of cool capabilities, uh, but there's some things that are lacking that I don't use it for. I'll begin with the Add Your Model up here on the top left-hand side. I already have one loaded up. Uh, and then you have a whole bunch of options here on the right-hand side with moving it, rotating it, scaling it, doing the basic stuff. Uh, you can also add in auto supports, uh, a wiping tower, uh, and you can actually control multiple machines, which is nice, um, or you can print directly from here. 
uh, what we're going to do though first is go into start slicing and it has a couple of things preset for you first off it knows what printer it is because down here on the right hand side uh, we can go in machine type and we set it for the adventurer 5m um, the 5M Pro is the same exact machine, except it's enclosed, uh, which means you can print other materials with it. But other than that, it's the same machine. And you can see there's lots of other machines that they have in their series. For instance, the Adventure 4 Pro, that's what I have at school. I have two of those. They're fantastic machines as well, but I really like the 5M. Uh, but let's go ahead and start slicing here. Uh, before we get going, we don't have any real options in this basic mode. I can change the nozzle size so we can go down to a quarter. Um, all the way up to 0.8 millimeters. Um, the default is 0.4, which is the only nozzle that I have for this. Uh, we can then choose what type of material we have. You can see there's lots of options. I just always choose Flash Forge uh, PLA. Seems to work just fine. And then the normal measurement there. Uh, and then we have our layer height, our fill density, uh, print speed, and shell count. If you want to go into expert mode, you can do that. And then you have a whole bunch of other options. You can adjust the extruder colors, the control mode. Uh, we can go into general and see exactly how all of this is going to function uh, with acceleration, retraction, all a bunch of stuff. You have full control of the printer when you're in here. Uh, there's lots and lots of options. You can even change your kind of grid area or your fill pattern, uh, change the percentages, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so there's lots and lots of things in there. Uh, I'm going to go back to basic mode because I don't really need to play with any of that for this example. I'll hit slice. It's going to go through and slice the model. And once it does, it will pop up and tell me how long it's going to take. Uh, so I have some options here. You see the top menu has changed. I can preview it, which will give me uh, kind of an idea of how long it takes. I can download it um, or I can send it to the printer as long as it's connected via Wi-Fi, which mine is. Um, but I would go to slice preview here real fast just to get an idea of what this is going to do. And up at the top here, it says it's going to take me 32 minutes. It'll do that. And then all of the G code is in there as well. So it gives me all of that stuff. You can see it's going to leave this little trail uh, to bleed off any of the extra stuff that we have. Let's go now into Orca Slicer. This is my preferred slicing software. I have the Flash Forge Adventure 5M with the uh, 4.0 nozzle loaded into my software. I have the exact same STL file. And from what I can tell, I have the exact same settings in here. Uh, if we go over into Strength, uh, you can see that I have the 15% filled and I have two shells or wall loops. Uh, so I have the same general settings. I don't know about the speed or any of that. I don't play with that stuff. Um, just because I haven't really had a need to. Uh, but when I go to slice plate on this one, you'll see that it'll slice through. This one's going to take 37 minutes and 31 seconds, um, accounting for uh, the prepare time on there. And that also is include leveling and all that other stuff. Uh, so this printer, um, or this print profile, is actually faster by about five minutes. Uh, for a small print like this, not a big deal, but on larger prints, it may matter. What I have found though is the quality of my prints off of the Orca Slicer is higher than what it is off the Flash Forge. Um, whatever is going on there, the speed that I'm gaining out of the Flash Print, um, it loses a bit of quality where I much prefer the quality of the prints from here. And you can tell there's significantly different number of lines of code for these two, which is always interesting to see. Uh, and the pathing they choose and all of that stuff is very different. Uh, but it's a really, really nice uh, printer and the slicing software is really good. And I like that it runs Clipper, which means you can use pretty much any slicing software you want as long as it supports Clipper. It's open source and you can use lots and lots of things uh, with it. So that's my uh, look at the slicing software for the Adventure 5. M, and let's take a look at the last final notes here. So the last few notes about this printer, um, I may enclose this somewhere down the road. Uh, you can see there's like little rails that you can slide the stuff into. I just have no need to print PLA, especially in a small basement kind of print area. It's nothing that I really need to do, uh, but I really, really dig this printer. Um, it doesn't take up a big footprint. You can see left to right, it's kind of set. This one actually extends beyond its print bed. So you have uh, the motors over there, there's stuff over there that go beyond the base. And this one also has stuff sticking out beyond the sides of it. Whereas this bad boy, there's nothing. It's an enclosed box or it's the kind of shell of an enclosed box. It reminds me a lot of uh, the faster bamboo printers that are more XY based, not this. Uh, but uh, the carbon and some of those, it's kind of a, a much less expensive version of those without color changing options. Uh, but I really, really dig this printer. I don't know why I have still have this on there, uh, but I find when I need to do stuff fast and repeatably, this is my printer of choice. And I think that's kind of a, a ringing endorsement for this thing is that if you need something that prints reliably and quickly, this is a really, really good choice. I'm very happy with what I have. And uh, I should also note this build plate here is really good. 
Um, I haven't had anything slipping off it. I haven't had anything peeling. I've just had luck with it so far. Uh, so that's kind of uh, what we're looking at there. Uh, if you're in the market for a printer, I don't think you can do much better than this one, especially if you're looking for single color and speed without a lot of size. This is your printer. Thanks for joining me. Let me know if you think of this printer or any other printers. I'll be taking a look at the A1 Mini down the road here, uh, but I just needed to play with it a little bit more before I can get uh, a real review on this. But I have uh, several hundred hours on this printer at this point, so I feel pretty comfortable uh, saying some things about it. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap us up here, folks. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.